السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We still are in United Nations headquarters to try to register Islamic relief in the ECOSAC uh, 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 the Committee of Economic and Social Status of the for non-government organization. This was, as I mentioned to you, on the 24th, 25th of March, 1993, which was the last day of Ramadan. And I discussed with you before in the previous episode about the meeting that we had in the night before about what question we should anticipate before we start going to the meeting publicly. Uh, God bless uh, my two colleagues who are with me, Khalid Roy who, and Saleh Saeed, who put, who laid down the foundation of all the questions which I could expect to answer on that day, which like money laundering, uh, anti-Semitism, uh, counter-extremism, radicalism, all these kind of things, and uh, discrimination, uh, no woman, uh, in all the difficult questions which reflect Islamophobia at that time. And uh, why don't we work with Muslims, the structure inside the organization, the registration, who runs the organization, and all these يعني, dubious questions. Uh, this was anticipated from the night before. Uh, on that day, there was, it was a historic day in the history of the United Nations because three organizations uh, were, orga- were trying to register on the same day. One of them was actually the gay and lesbian organization. I can't remember its name, and uh, which was a historic day for them that actually the United Nations accepted their paper and granted them the status. This is number one. Number two is Human Rights Watch, which came there, and uh, it was received by bombardment from some of the Arab ambassadors who were actually roasted, roasting, who were roasting actually the CEO of the organization who became angry and walked out of the room, but of course it was not registered. The third one was us. So Islamic organization, a lesbian gay organization, as well as uh, uh, Human Rights Watch. Uh, what used to happen in the hall? Soon the delegation, the delegate will go to the stage to start to speak. Each ambassador would be actually asking him or ask uh, her uh, one question one by one and so on and uh, to give them the, 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 the representative a chance to respond and they move from one to another to another. So when I stood up and they took the stage, I found that most of the, the, the ambassadors were raising their hands. They were very excited uh, to ask me a question. I don't know why the people have something about They have read our papers, they are very interested in Islamic belief and so on. And at least 15, between 15 and 20 questions have been uh, uh, raised uh, towards me to answer them in 20 minutes. What happened, alhamdulillah, uh, the, the good preparation of the night before uh, paid it is uh, price of actually enabling me to respond to all these questions which we discussed it the night before. So what happened? Alhamdulillah, all the questions came as we discussed in the night before. So the response was I was very cool, very composed, and uh, rehearsing, rehearsing as if I'm memorizing all the answer of the question and as if I'm reading also uh, from a text in front of me publicly. So it was this kind of confidence given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the proper consultation happened between me, uh, Khalid, and uh, Saleh. And I was answering the question in a very composed way, satisfying all the ambassadors. So my time was up, the 20 minutes, and the chairwoman, the chairperson, actually said, okay, it's enough, your, your time's up. I would say, I'm sorry, I still have got five more questions to answer, and I will come down from the stage when actually uh, I answered all the questions. So I finished all of them. Uh, but one ambassador at the end, before I uh, uh, the ended my uh, intervention, which is a Swedish ambassador, the lady ambassador, who said, I need to read your document because I have not had the time to read it. In this kind of meeting, you have to have a consensus that all the ambassadors have to agree 
to let you come to Inazimation. I finished my discussion, came down. We did not know what's happening, what's going to happen. And there were, I, was, I was talking to some woman who came, uh, looks like what, Egyptian. It became, uh, it was, uh, she was uh, Dr. Amani Khandil from Cairo. And she advised me to do something called lobbying. I did not know what lobbying at that time means. Lobbying means that you go and talk and introduce yourself and your organization to all the ambassadors in the room to try to win them to support your case. I started to do this, actually. I started to, to after Saleh and Khalid went back to UK, uh, we, the following day we went to pray Eid in the central mosque, the Grand Mosque in New York. I think we met uh, Ali Azabek, which was that everybody was receiving him, uh, and welcoming him. And on, I think on Wednesday, or I came back with, started with, uh, يعني, back to, or the same day, I came back to the room, starting to go and interview, or to actually talk to the ambassadors there and to distribute some of our leaflet and documentation to them. Let us start with the Arabs. I, I met some three Arab ambassadors, and all of them, unfortunately, uh, were uh, shrugging the shoulder to me in a very negative way. One of them said, your problem, sir, that your name is Islamic, so what to do? And they, I don't think they were, they, they were register you. I think they will put you on a roster status, you come back after two years. I said, what do you want me to do now? Well, apply it for the registration. And uh, now, uh, do you want us to change our name now? I said, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. The second one was asking me, as you, how was your relationship with the Dawah political party in Iraq? I said, what is that? I don't know. It's a Dawah political party, I never heard of it. The third one, went quiet because his his country was under a very uh, uh, severe security controlled regime. Anyway, this was the first three to try to lobby to help me. None of them gave me a positive answer. Uh, then I went to the French ambassador to try to lobby him who said that you are a Saudi organization, why don't you go to Saudi Arabia as an ambassador to come and support you? I said, well, no Saudi organization, or British international organization. Trying to, and because at that time, international Islamic relations was the most famous uh, in, in the East, but, uh, as an Islamic relation. I went to the Russian, I went to the Costa Rica, I went to the Irish, and all of them. For a few days, I was going in and out to lobby those ambassadors and to speak to them. Some of them used to uh, speak to me and the others didn't. Um, and the good, tie, the good thing is, is we, I, we usually time different between London and New York is five hours. So I used to wake up at four or five o'clock in the morning to start talking to the office in, in Birmingham and London about what's the up to date. And alhamdulillah, we have received a fax from a United Nations office uh, in uh, UNHCR, United Nations High Commission Office in, 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 uh, in uh, Bosnia, thanking us for donating 300 metric ton of wheat uh, flour. I, I took the facts and I copied it and I distributed it to everybody. By Friday, I was trying to speak to the, some of our friends, like the Sudanese ambassador. I said, unfortunately, that your situation as an Islamic organization is going to be very difficult and you might have to come back in two years' time. I was boiling at that time when he told me that in the corner. So I went to the stage, I took the microphone, I started to speak. The, the lady chair, she told me, sir, can you come down, please? I said, I'm not going to come down. I've been here for the, last, for the whole week. And you people leaving me without telling me what's happening. You need to tell me what the decision will be. And uh, what happened at that time, the Irish ambassador, God bless him, whether he's alive or he's dead, and his sir and his husband, and he took the, the, the microphone and they said, I've read all the documentation which has been uh, presented to us by Islamic Leaf uh, delegation. And I'm very satisfied. Even they have donated 300 metric ton to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees before they bec before becoming a member of the ECOSAC. I second them and I nominate them to become a member of that. But to try to respect the opinion of my colleague, the Swedish colleague, let us actually give her the chance to read the document over the weekend. And some Monday morning, uh, we have to uh, discuss the issue of Islamic Leaf to be the first case 
at 9 o'clock in the morning at the time. This actually made me very happy and this is what actually something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, what to do over the weekend? Of course, I do, cannot sit down in New York doing nothing. I took the plane and I traveled to uh, Canada to see one of somebody uh, who was in charge of an organization called Human, Lift, uh, Human Concern International to start to uh, understand how the work, the humanitarian work is being done and organized in Canada. I spent the weekend there and then I came back. And the Monday morning, uh, uh, I came early to the hall and uh, I spoke to the Sudanese ambassador, a very uh, kind man. I told him, listen, if you don't support us like the Irish uh, ambassador, I will talk to Hosni Barak to stop the Nile f flow of uh, and flowing in uh, or running in Sudan. Uh, he was uh, smiling and he, as an Arab uh, uh, diplomat and ambassador, he gave a very strong recommendation to us. Alhamdulillah, I got two recommendations from two countries, one from the west, which is Ireland, and one from the east, which is uh, Sudan. And uh, after that, uh, uh, the chair lady was saying that any objection, any objection was the of Islamic belief, no objection, no objection three times. So she uh, said, passed, alhamdulillah, and we were registered. On the same day, alhamdulillah, I was, we were planning to go because my visit to, to our, our visit to New York at the time was actually, how they mentioned to go to Canada to see what's going on, to start looking forward for registering Islamic belief in Canada in the future, as well as to register Islamic belief in in, uh, in America. I traveled to from New York to Los Angeles, uh, to California. People were telling me, why didn't you stay in New York? I said, because in New York at that time, there was a lot of organization, Muslim and particularly Arab organization, and there was a lot of conflict between different groups in New York, New Jersey, uh, Washington DC, uh, Michigan, uh, Chicago in the East. And this was a lot of problems in this area. In spite of the fact was it was closer to the east, it was cheaper than actually the far west of Los Angeles, and, but we decided strategically to keep us away, keep us away from this actually uh, chaotic situation which was happening in the east coast of America at that time. And by, I think, June or July or July or August, we had Islamic League registered in Los Angeles, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi See you again maybe in uh, 1993 in America again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi